parable of the chloroplast. Two billion years ago, life was flourishing in the seas. There were no people on Earth yet, not even monkeys or mosquitoes or oak trees. Actually, there weren't any creatures on Earth at all. No one had yet figured out how to live on dry land. But still, there was life. Tiny, single-celled organisms floating around in the great blue sea. Broadly speaking, these creatures came in two varieties, the autotrophs, the self-eaters, and the heterotrophs, the other eaters. That term, autotroph, self-eating, is actually surprisingly accurate, but I'm getting a bit ahead of myself here. These two kinds of creatures, the autotrophs and the heterotrophs, they were locked in an eternal battle. The autotrophs had evolved a special kind of chemistry called photosynthesis, which allowed them to synthesize their food from photons. That is, they could eat light. This was a very, very big deal. The photosynthesizing autotrophs were basically self-sufficient. They didn't need anything from nobody and could get by perfectly fine on their own with nothing but a nice sunny day. But the heterotrophs, they were not so self-reliant. They were the parasites, the predators. They had not evolved a special chemistry that would allow them to eat light, and so they were forced to live a more extractive existence, stealing their food from others. Instead of photosynthesis, they evolved other tricks. Speedy flagellum to let them move around the water, gigantic bodies with which they could engulf their prey. In short, while the strategy of the autotrophs was to be small and self-reliant, the strategy of the heterotrophs was to be large, complicated, manipulative. These two strategies seemed diametrically opposed, fundamentally at odds, eat or be eaten. But then, one day, something unusual happened. There was a tiny little autotroph, let's call her chloroplast. And on this day, chloroplast was swallowed up by a nasty heterotroph, let's call her plant. Normally, when this sort of thing happens, enzymes in the predator digest the prey in no short order, but this time, this time was different. Chloroplast said to the plant, wait, wait, you can eat me, but don't digest me just yet. Let me live inside you for a little while. If you keep me safe from harm, if you make sure nobody else eats me and make sure I have enough sunlight and water and minerals, I will transform them all into all the food you could ever desire. You'll never have to eat another cell again. This seemed like a pretty good deal to plant, so she agreed, and the eukaryotic cell was born. Eukaryotes are chimeras. They are hybrid cells, bodies which are actually communities. Predator and prey combined into a symbiotic whole. Of course, it didn't actually happen like this. Chloroplasts don't speak, after all, and in actuality, the evolution of the eukaryotic cell took millions of years of evolutionary negotiation. But there is a good reason I have for telling you this story the way I did. Let's flash forward about two billion years into the future, almost to the modern day, 10,000 years ago, when our ancestor humans were still nomadic, living a life of hunting and gathering. One day, your great 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 grandmother was walking through the fields, and she came upon a grass plant with particularly large seeds. She was about to swallow them all at once, but the plant cried out and said, Wait! Wait! You can eat me! But not just yet. First, take me back to your family. Plant me in the ground close to where you sleep. Let me live there for a little while. If you keep me safe from harm, if you make sure no one else eats me and make sure I have enough sunlight and water and minerals, I will transform them all into all the food you could ever desire. You'll never have to hunt again. This seemed like a pretty good deal to grandmother, so she agreed, and agriculture was born. And inside the bodies of those first domesticated plants were eukaryotic cells. And inside those eukaryotic cells were chloroplasts playing out the very same story two billion years later. The chloroplast reminds us of the purpose of cooperation. When we choose to live together, we can go beyond the limitations of predator and prey and instead live life as a whole.